中十四岁的爱德华·塞勒住在西雅图一片乡村农场中，和多数美国老人一样，生活平静安宁。这样的生活使爱德华·塞勒在七十二年前的有几个月的时间里，根本不敢去想象的未来。当时他面临的只有两种命运：生存或是死亡。Thoughts was just about the today and tomorrow survival, getting down the road. Of course, at that point. 如今，在爱德华·塞勒的梦境中，依然会有 B-25 轰炸机飞过。七十二年前，一九四二年四月十八日，他作为杜立特飞行队成员，驾驶那架飞机执行了震惊世界的轰炸东京行动。之后，在一个暴雨磅礴的夜里，迫降在了中国东南沿海的村落中。在接下来的几天时间里，他和其他六十多名战友。通过各种方式得到了中国村民的援救。What do we do now? Look at that big ocean and say, "Home is way over there." You know, here we are, a strange part of the world on an island. So, well, fishermen knew that we wanted to go. To, to the mainland, and we do little pictures or scenes on the ground, and、um, so fishermen took us from that island to another island. The Japanese were occupied the island during the day and harassed the people and stole whatever chickens or eggs or whatever they could find. 老康出事，我就脱险了，老婆伤了啦，没得钱，奶奶奶奶我我也不帮伊们了。我看不起我爹，这还有几个我家的，比如三个鸡蛋，这这些这些的，你木蛋这个，我们司机七点他才赶车。Two of them were sitting across from us, and then one on each side of me, and they brought out a, probably a bowl of, of, of rice and stuff. I don't know anyhow. There was so much excitement in that for having a foreigner there that finally they noticed I wasn't eating. Well, I don't think I'd ever seen a pair of chopsticks before, so they finally found a spoon for me to use. No, Papa, she. So you were cut down some of the tree trunks. Then they cut it down. Now they are just okay. Now, the eighty-year-old Liao Faming still remembers the day. 在父亲廖师元护送飞行员离开家时，还抬走了一口棺材。三号机组射击员利兰·法克特在迫降时不幸遇难，他的尸体被村民们在飞机残骸中发现。按照当地风俗，村民夜里在山上为他守灵，随后用棺木为他入殓，并在护送其他飞行员时，一起将棺材交给了军方。爱德华·塞勒和他所在机组的同伴们幸运地活了下来，并被当地村民送到了方圆百里内医疗条件最好的临海恩泽医院。
And Dr. White said his leg got to be amputated, getting green setting in. 泰德·劳森在后来根据他的亲身经历，写下了《东京上空三十秒》一书。随后，北米高梅电影公司拍成了同名电影。电影一九四四年在美国上映时，战争还尚未结束。虽然书名关于东京字样，但是其中更多的内容是关于他在中国的经历。在劳森的回忆录中这样写道：“就在他们抬着我出去的时候。”我感觉整个中国都向我们伸出了帮助的手。手术后的劳森短期内无法远行，他的同伴却不得不和他告别。We had to get moving, so we left. Japanese were pretty much all around there. They They were wherever they wanted to be on the East Coast, so we had to work our way through that area. We spent a couple of weeks getting. 杜立特飞行队进入中国时，中日全面开战已经进入第六个年头，中国的沿海省份更是日本争夺的重点区域。杜立特飞行队的成员如果想如愿回到他们的祖国。只能穿越日军占领区，先到达中国的西南后方。We didn't go into the villages if we could help it. We've been told that there are some Chinese that might sell us out to the Japanese, and I understand one crew got involved that way. So.、Uh, Plan was to stay away from the village as much as we could. Then the bomb craters were, by evening, were filled by Chinese laborers and tamped down, so so the runway was okay. But then, but then the fourth morning, then they brought in. The 独立特飞行队共有十三个机组的六十四名成员，在中国幸免于难，分别处于浙江和江西的不同县市。迫降几天之后，他们基本上与当地的中国政府人员取得了联系。短暂停留之后，在各地向导的带领下，选择最安全的线路，向当时的陪都重庆转移。In that area, there was no transportation, no bus, no train, no automobiles, and no English-speaking people around there at all. 由于杜立特飞行机组散落在不同的地方，他们向中国大后方转移时，基本上还是分散行动。尽管有中国向导带路，语言仍然是飞行员和中国人交流的最大障碍。只有少数人拥有遇到翻译的幸运。刘同生，清华大学航空工程专业毕业生，在上海结婚之后，返回西南的途中路过临海。He was, you know, he had no connection to the Chinese resistance or the Chinese government. Really, he was just a private citizen, a civilian, traveling through this fairly remote part of the countryside. But somehow the authorities, who had, you know, had the、uh, ra American raiders in their custody, knew that they needed a translator, and somehow word got around that there was this guy traveling through their town, who probably came from the big city, might have had an education, and so they approached him and they found him. What he used to tell his family, us children, was that、um, in the you know. At night, some local guerrilla, Chinese guerrilla, Yuji Dui,、mm -hmm. somebody、uh, came and said, "Do you speak English?" And he said, "Well, I learned English in middle school, and、uh, when I learned aeronautical engineering, I, some of the books were in English, so I do know a little bit of English, but not very well." And they said, "Okay, come with me. Come with me." So they took him to another place, and. To his surprise, there were 
these five Americans there <laughs> in very dirty clothes and kind of confused and sort of tense. 刘同生看到的是杜立特二号机组的飞行员们。两天前，刘同生已经从中国的报纸上看到了美国人轰炸东京的消息，但他完全没有想到做这件事的就是眼前这些外国人。当一切都弄清楚了之后，他欣然当起了翻译。So, again, with regard to the doodle raid, you know, he knew this would help the country. That this was an important task. That He was going to undertake, and so I, I think it was not something that he had to think about very much at all.、Um, the consequences, you know, that he could possibly be captured or killed by the Japanese. I think he was well aware of that. My father remembers that when they were in, um, in、uh, I think it was in Chuzhou, and they had to every day they had to hide in the、uh, air raid shelter. It was a cave, basically a dark cave, because of air raids. Going overhead, they would play American poker. So that must have, you know, maybe he knew how to play it before, but that's probably the first time he actually played it with Americans. And of course, it was very dangerous. But、uh, my father never talked so much about the danger part of it.、Um, he he talked a lot about、uh, the adventure part of it. You know, I think I think he thought it was a. An amazing adventure, and he he really liked these guys. Yan Bi 之上的这两个英文名，是七十多年前杜立特飞行队二号机组的副驾驶威廉菲茨修和枪炮手格拉斯拉德尼留下的。除了这样的地方，还有很多时候，刘同生和他新结识的美国牌友住在寺庙里。My father describing there would be big Buddhas in the temples, but maybe the walls are kind of falling down. Maybe they had been bombed already, and you know, so it was just like a place to shelter. The feeling you get is that a lot of the traditions of, of China, you know, old China, the society, the way people lived,、um, the expectations that they had, a lot of it was just. All messed up. All, all、um, changed now because of the war. But, 偶尔飞行员们也有片刻的轻松，甚至可以在光天化日之下大摇大摆地走在街上。They moved very openly. So,、um, I think my father described it as、um, some of the areas they were moving through was called no man's land. Meaning nobody really controlled it. In the daytime, the Japanese were more powerful. And then at the nighttime, the Chinese were in control. So it was a very、uh, funny kind of thing. He describes scenes where they would just walk openly in the street in the daytime, and people would greet them, and it would be very friendly. And they would have big banquets along the way. They had incredible, incredibly good food. One town.、Uh... The army was there. And they had troops and everything there. And they had a little celebration for us. And his pictures around it shows five guys in white shirts. Yeah, the one on the left is me. 让爱德华塞勒和他的同伴们惊讶的是，他们居然在餐桌上看到了酒。We learned that.、Um, That these local people weren't allowed to drink alcohol except with a foreign guest. That was the way it was explained. And so these foreign guests was their excuse to have some drinks there at the dinner. <laughs> which, which they did, and that was nice. Had wine. <laughs> I think not only government officials and, and military commanders, but also local bankers and merchants. You know, people who had money would just donate. You know, so they could have a big banquet for these Americans, and they're very friendly. They、uh, smiling most of the time. That's what what they told us、uh, to recognize whether it's Japanese or Chinese, because the Japanese is very smell, smell them smile, and Chinese is real smell, smile all the time. Yeah, <laughs> they pretty well knew. But then I think what what we done 
uh, we had done something that they hadn't been able to do for four years of fighting the Japanese, and that was uh, bomb the Japanese homeland. It only, not only boosted the morale in the United States but, and all the allies, but it did about the, same, the opposite for the Japanese. 浙江省临海市潘庄是当年浙西行署所在地。杜立特所带领的一号机组迫降的第二天，在这里见到了行署主任贺阳林，并通过电波发出了轰炸东京成功的消息。也是在这里，一号机组拍下了他们进入中国第一张照片。他们照相的地方，应该就在这个位置。这边有个台阶，从照片里可以看到，就在这个位置上。杜立特在这里停留了五天，期间他和中国战时陪都重庆取得了联系，中国政府承诺将帮助所有机组成员从重庆返回美国。之后，他带领一号机组开始了在中国的长途跋涉。Well, when、uh, we were finished at the、uh, General Hoes、uh, headquarters,、uh, we walked. We rode ponies, horses, a little.、Uh, we rode bus, a car, a boat,、uh, a seating chair, a rickshaw. Well, like I told you、uh, the other day, that、uh, to me the seating chair was very bad, <laughs> worse than flying. <laughs> you have four. Very small people with a chair and a board, shoulder to shoulder. But if one stumble, oh, <laughs> and the ground is very hard. <laughs> Actually, the the road or trail that we took was very small, was very deep down one side and high on this side. 护送飞行员的轿夫大部分是政府临时征用的，政府也付给了他们相应的报酬，但是与轿夫承担的巨大风险相比，只能算作一个精神安慰。离开浙西行署之后，很长一段时间里，杜立特和大部分分散转移的队员一样，受到无法用语言交流的困扰。直到进入金华地界的时候。杜立特终于遇到了一位让他满意的翻译。三十七岁的周有光是重庆一家银行的高级雇员，在金华处理完公事，通过关系搭上了一辆中国的军车回重庆。在交通运输紧张的战时中国，这是很不容易做到的事情。没想到这一次，周有光却误打误撞地成了杜立特的翻译。杜立特这个人呢？个儿不是很高，精神很好。我好，我好给他讲笑话。我说你，我说你，你，你的名字叫叫做的很少，其实你做的很多。几十年后，周有光早已是中国著名经济学家和语言文字学家，但是，一百零九岁的周有光对当年的很多细节仍然记忆犹新。两个人一同坐在一个吉普车的前面，风很大，我呢有点咳嗽，他把他的皮夹克脱下来给我穿，我说不好意思，他说不行，一定要我穿，所以所以所以他，他虽然是军人，他待人非常好。战争结束以后，周有光还曾利用在美国出差的机会，拜访过当时已经成为壳牌公司副总裁的杜立特。后来，我去看他，他记得非常清楚，因为我们在一起有好几天。周有光和杜立特一直到达桂林后才分手惜别，周有光继续乘坐汽车前往目的地。杜立特和其他机组人员则登上中国政府专程派来的运输机，和周有光前往同一个地方——重庆。Then the fourth morning, then they brought a twin-engine cargo plane in from Chongqing to pick us up. <coughs> That day, the Japanese came over and bombed and strafed that pagoda. 
They had spies through there. They knew what what we've been doing. 一九四二年五月，杜立特飞行队的飞行员在中国军民一路护送之下，穿越一千多公里的路程，分批次到达重庆，受到了当时中国的最高礼遇。Is there no small? Ah, he was there in Chongqing. We had dinner with him and his wife one night, and then he had to go off to the business of war. And so she, Madam, entertained us while we were there. She was very nice, very kind. She saw to it that we were fed, and she listened, talked to each one of us. In Hanyang, I needed a haircut, so I went in a Chinese barber shop there, and and he used a pair of hand clippers to. Cut all my hair off. So then, in Chongqing, I, I was in low, lowest ranking uh, there of the, the corporal. So I was at the end of the line. <laughs> so when she came to me, she said, "I see you have donated your hair to the war effort." <laughs> While I was there, um, she gave us a medal, a Chinese sort of air medal, you know. And I didn't know it, but we were being filmed by Movie Tone News. Have you heard that story? My uh, wife went to a movie, seen the Movie Tone News. There I was on the film. <laughs> Ran home, got her mother, sat through another movie, made sure she seen what she thought she seen. <laughs> 此次见面之后，中国政府开始陆续安排杜立特飞行队返回美国。此时，只有七号机组的驾驶员劳森，因为没有度过手术危险期，依然留在当初他们迫降的地方。一九四二年五月十八日，九死一生的劳森，在浙江已经滞留了一个月的时间，日本人咄咄逼近，劳森必须立刻转移。我们身后不断传来爆炸声，而且间歇很均匀。我问陈医生：“那到底是什么？”他悲哀而又清醒地答道：“日本人太近了，所以中国人等我们过了，就把路炸掉。”一九四二年五月下旬，中国医生陈慎言亲自护送劳森辗转到达昆明。之后，劳森乘坐的飞机飞越喜马拉雅山，横跨半个地球，终于回到了美国。踏上回乡之路，飞行员们既有劫后余生的喜悦，也带走各自的遗憾。A few days on the trail, we met a, a young boy about fourteen, fifteen years old, and he was, his family had been killed in the bombing of Shanghai, and he was homeless. He spoke little English. He took up with us. And became our navigator, our interpreter, and food scrounger. So, and he stayed with us the whole way till we got picked up by with an airplane. So we we hold this kid big time. You know, he he was a lifesaver for us. I tried to get him on the airplane. The pilot said no civilians. We left this kid standing on the runway. And I have no idea what happened. We owed him big time. We would have brought him all the way home with us and done whatever it took to take care of him. He had no. 至此，杜立特飞行队完成了在中国的胜利大逃亡。他们当中的一部分回到了美国，还有一部分则留在中国，成为了飞虎队的一员。然而，就在飞行员们在一次开始生命抉择的时候，他们刚刚离开的乡镇和村庄，却无从选择地陷入了日本军队疯狂的报复当中。